Have you ever found yourself scrolling mindlessly through your phone for hours on end, even when you have other things to do? If so, you're not alone. According to website reviews.org, in 2023, Americans check their phones an average of 144 times a day and spend a whopping 4 hours and 25 minutes on their phone each day. So why do we do it? A part of our daily life. The extent to which smartphones have permeated our daily lives is a major contributing factor. Consider how frequently we use our phones in today's world. Our smartphones have evolved into indispensable tools for getting through the day, whether it be for checking the weather, placing food orders, or finding a new location. Numerous other tasks, such as checking our work email, or keeping up with friends and family on social media, practically demand the usage of a smartphone. And because there are so many apps and services, it could seem like we always have something pressing to take care of on our phones. Therefore, it's understandable to constantly check our phones as they have become integral parts of ourselves. However, it's vital to take a step back and question whether all of this phone use is actually benefiting us. Smartphones and apps are addicting. You may not realize this, but many apps are in fact made to keep us hooked and coming back for more. These programs' addictive nature is due to certain creative design choices. Notifications are one classic trick. They buzz and ding, luring us to open the app out of curiosity for what is going on. It seems to be a never-ending circle of, ooh, what's new? Social media platforms like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter are masters of the addictive game. They're designed to keep us scrolling endlessly through our feeds, seeking that dopamine hit from likes, comments, and the latest updates from our friends and favorite accounts. The artful use of colors and images comes next. The software's eye-catching colors and fancy animations appeal to us, making us feel lively and energetic. Also, apps use something called social proof to make them even more addictive. Social proof is when you're more likely to do something if you see others doing it. Many apps use this principle to create a sense of social pressure and encourage people to engage with the app more frequently. They make you feel like everyone else is using the app all the time. So you feel compelled to jump in and use it too. It's like they're saying, hey, everyone's doing it, why aren't you? Sneaky, right? So, next time you feel that urge to check an app just because everyone else seems to be. Remember, you're not alone in falling for their tricks. Oh, and don't forget about those super addictive mobile games. Games like Candy Crush, Mobile Legends, and Pokemon Go are just a few examples that keep us glued to our screens for hours on end, constantly desiring the next level or the rare Pokemon catch. The fact is that these enticing apps and the components of their design are capable of absorbing all of our attention and time. They're designed to make our brains release dopamine, the same feel-good chemical we get when munching on our favorite foods or engaging in other fun stuff. And all of these design aspects are meant to cause a release of this chemical in our brains. So, it's critical to recognize their tactics and strike a balance, folks. Psychological factors. Let's dive into how our phones can seriously mess with our minds. Turns out, our obsession with technology can mess with our heads in a bunch of ways. Like causing anxiety and FOMO or fear of missing out. Anxiety is no joke. Making your mind race and your heart pump like crazy. And guess what? Phones can make it even worse. The constant flood of information can overload our brains. Leaving us feeling super anxious and overwhelmed. But that's not all. We're all familiar with the concept of FOMO, right? It's that nagging feeling that others are out there having a blast while we're missing out. Social media plays a big role in fueling those feelings. With everyone showing their highlight reel, sharing only their best moments, it can feel like everyone else is living their best life. While we're the only ones just muddling through. 
That comparison game can make us feel inadequate and down about ourselves. The key is finding a balance with our phones. We don't have to ditch them completely because they can be handy. For staying connected and getting stuff done. But we also don't want them taking over our lives. And messing with our health, relationships, and overall well-being. So next time you instinctively grab your phone, ask yourself. Do I really need to check it right now? Am I scrolling through social media, making unhealthy comparisons? If the answer is yes, it might be time for a break. Put that phone down for a bit and give your mental health a breather. Trust me, your mental health will thank you. Habit and boredom. A habit that can contribute to our phone checking behavior is just one more, mentality. We might tell ourselves that we'll just quickly check our email or social media for a few minutes. But then find ourselves getting sucked in and spending much longer than we intended on our phones. You know how sometimes you find yourself mindlessly reaching for your phone? Like, it's become a reflex or something. We use them so much that our brains get wired to automatically grab them in certain situations. Or, have you ever caught yourself swiping through your phone when you're bored or have some free time to kill? It's a common habit many of us have picked up. And it's a big reason why we're always checking our phones. Smartphones have become our go-to for entertainment and distraction. Filling those moments when we'd otherwise be twiddling our thumbs or waiting around. Whether we're in line at the store, on a bus or train, or just waiting for a buddy. We easily whip out our phones to pass the time. This phone checking routine is influenced by habits we've developed over time. Like, checking our phones first thing in the morning. Or right before bed becomes part of our daily routine. And those notifications and alerts, they create this sense of urgency, making us feel like we gotta look right away. Consequences of excessive phone use. Health effects. While they may offer convenience, using screens extensively can have negative effects on our physical and mental well-being. Prolonged screen time strains our eyes, causing dryness and fatigue. Also, prolonged phone use can lead to neck and shoulder discomfort from poor posture. As research published in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health, excessive phone use has been associated with anxiety and depression. The constant flow of information can hinder relaxation, leaving us in a perpetually anxious state. To protect ourselves, take frequent phone breaks to rest our eyes and neck, be mindful of phone use and seek help if experiencing anxiety or depression. Prioritizing our health is paramount. Interpersonal effects. Phones can hinder productivity and focus. We often find ourselves getting sidetracked by scrolling instead of paying attention to important tasks. So what can we do? Well, when it comes to relationships, it's important to give undivided attention to the people we are with. By putting our phone aside or keeping it in another room. For improved productivity, minimize phone use during times when you need to be focused. Silence your phone, disable notifications, and resist the temptation to constantly check it. Your brain will appreciate the break. To overcome these habits and reduce phone use. Find alternative activities instead of scrolling through social media. Like reading a book. Trying new sports. Playing board games with family. Pursuing long desired interests. Or going for a walk. Keep in mind, it's not an all or nothing process. With practice and self-discipline, you can set healthy boundaries, reduce phone use. And still stay connected without feeling like you're missing out. There's a whole world beyond our screens waiting for us to explore. See you guys in the next video.